Good to see you this morning. Glad that you're here. Uh, again, appreciate all those that uh, brought things yesterday for the pig picking. Went over well. Had some good food, good fellowship time. And I uh, hope you got enough to eat. I believe that you did. And uh, But anyway, it's a good time. And thank you again for uh, coming and, and uh, participating, bringing food, uh, and all that good stuff, and cooking. Thank you for Miss Margaret letting us use her place down there. Always a good place uh, to go. And uh, during this time of year, especially in the wintertime, keeps everything warm. And uh, so appreciate that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again. I hope you had a good Sunday school hour. And we're looking forward to God speaking to our hearts in the 11 o'clock hour. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for who you are. We're thankful, God, that uh, we can call upon you at any moment, any time of the day. Father, help us again. Father, we know if we're all honest, uh, probably already this morning, we've made decisions, uh, again, that uh, were not pleasing to you. And so we pray, God, that you'd help us to stay uh, true to you, close to you. And, and uh, again, may we follow you in all that we do. Speak to our hearts as we open up the word of God together. Thank you for those that have made their way out. Uh, Father, we know or we hope that they've come again to hear from you rather from myself or any other teacher. And uh, we pray that the Spirit of God would teach us and give us what we need, Father. We're not asking, Father, for uh, wants and desires and all these things. Father, give us what we need. And may, again, our wants and desires be what we need. And uh, we pray you teach us this from your word. Thank you again for letting us be here. Thank you for giving us the health, the strength uh, to be able to come. We know there will be a day, more than likely, uh, most people uh, go through um, uh, elderly age and not able to do what they used to be able to do and so we pray father now as we uh, can that we will we pray this in jesus wonderful name amen
143. This is my Father's world. Let's stand and sing all three verses, please. Page 143. <laughs> say in 2021 we are far away from that wouldn't you think in our day today but uh, we're not on this world's timetable we're on God's timetable he's in control of all things and he's still sovereign although there is the God of this world uh, Satan he's not in control ultimately because only God has complete control amen and uh, we need to rest in that right Amen. Brother Richie, you pray for us, please, sir. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this another Lord's Day. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine on the outside. Thank you for each one that's come out to the house of the Lord today. And may we mm -hmm. really and truly worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you, Lord, that uh, this is your world. That's, uh, and, uh, you are the God of this world. You have, you're sovereign. You have absolute rule and authority over everything. And thank you for the battle that was won at Calvary yeah. some 2,000 years ago, Lord, when you willing to give your only son uh, in our place there to be our substitute, Lord. And we thank you and praise you for that. And, Lord, we just ask you might bless in the service today. Mm -hmm. You might be with our pastor. You might just anoint him new and afresh. You might speak through them, speak to our hearts, give us your receptive hearts to receive that message today, Lord. And uh, may, when we get ready to leave, that we might say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. And we love you and thank you for your great love for us. And all these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. All right. I want to recognize our teacher of the week. I should be myself. didn't realize that until right now. But... I uh, certainly appreciate your prayers uh, for myself and uh, as we teach. And, uh, we just pray God would guide us and direct us in the things that we do teach. Uh, then uh, the Wagar family, Josh and Sarah, lift them up to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we'll find out from them what some of their needs might be. Uh, I got a call back from, uh, which was a blessing from the Winston Rescue Mission. I believe the man's name is Steve. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but anyway, he called me and was really, really appreciative of, church's offering uh, for the meals and uh, you don't often get calls back but that was a blessing that he uh, just wanted me to tell the church how they appreciate all that we did to help them out and uh, this Thanksgiving 
I can't remember again how many meals it ended up being, but anyway, it's just a blessing to be able to do that. So we appreciate him calling us and uh, letting us know. We don't do it for that, amen? We're not looking for a call for that, but it is a blessing when they do call back and are thankful. Uh, our, <clears throat> excuse me, our uh, government official is uh, Cindy Perry, uh, mayor of Pittsburgh, and so we want to pray for her. And UNC Life Flight is our local safety organization, and certainly want to uh, lift uh, them up uh, to the Lord. Don't forget, of course, choir practice today and then the 21st, preparing for our Christmas music and uh, a day which will be uh, December the 19th. And uh, so on Sunday morning, is a, you can invite people to that. We'll have a, uh, a dinner afterwards and, uh, and then we won't, we won't have an evening service. But uh, anyway, just uh, pray the Lord will bless that and just watch over us as we, as a choir, uh, prepare uh, for that day.
to that again. And uh, what a song, right? What words to the song. It needs to be all these things to us, but uh, oftentimes we trade other things that are not worthy uh, you know, of, his, of his name. Uh, good to have Allie with us, Allie Mitchell. Glad she's here. Appreciate her coming and all of our guests. Glad you guys are here. Um, I do want you to pray for uh, Rhonda's mom and uh, Ms. Dawkins, uh, not doing uh, very well, so just pray for her, Rhonda Johnson's mom, and then pray for Sherry Johnson, uh, Dean Sherry Johnson, she's not feeling well, lift her up to the Lord in prayer. Continue to pray for Hannah Smith, and, uh, heart there, and that uh, God would uh, just give the doctor's wisdom, and of course she's going to have this ablation. Um, what's that date again? December the 8th. December the 8th. Sherry Johnson's um, cousin, uh, April, will have surgery this Tuesday, so certainly pray for her. Then uh, I got a text from them that Ben Hart, um, Angela and Anthony Hart's uh, son, was in a car accident on Thursday and really messed up his back, and they had to fuse it together and things like that, so he's in the hospital at Chapel Hill and uh, still has uh, not all of his uh, feelings there in his legs, so just pray that God would uh, watch over him. Um, Sherry had mentioned last week the Desmond family, they, he did die, the other boy that was in a car wreck at uh, the Northwood, um, so pray for the family there, the Desmond family, if you lift them up to the Lord in prayer. Uh, also continue to pray for Suzanne, good to see her uh, this morning, continue to lift her up to the Lord in prayer, she continues to heal. Uh, Robert Marsh uh, really doesn't look good, his situation there, missionary. Uh, with his cancer, um, they can't do chemo, right? But uh, they're doing radiation and until he gets stronger. Until he gets stronger, and then plus he's they didn't tell him that he was going to have these mental problems and difficulties there, and so he's really not himself. And so just uh, pray for him. Uh, I believe Robert is in his late fifties. Not sure exactly how old he is, but uh, just pray. I know for sure that's too young. I'm getting getting close to that. So just pray God would just touch him if it be his will. Um, not sure on uh, Barbara Marley and what took place for the sale and all that, but um, she I'll get in touch with her this week. And uh, that, that ended on Tuesday, so we'll see, um, you know, uh, everything there. So continue to pray uh, for her. Um, any other requests that you might have? morning. All right, certainly want to pray for each and every one of these requests and just ask God to have his will and way. Uh, I do pray for Susanna. She's coming back from the wilds um, for a uh, teen adventure trip uh, that ends today around one o'clock, I think, so they'll be coming back home. Uh, just pray for all those. Uh, she went with another group. Kind of interesting. It's the first time we've never been there <laughs> ourselves, and so uh, kind of strange there, but so anyway, uh, I think 11 other teenagers went to, with another family, and so just pray that God has done a work in their hearts and lives at this uh, teen adventure uh, weekend. All right, Brother Paul, you pray for us, please, sir, if you would. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, first of all, for your presence here today. Lord, we thank you for your saving grace that you make available for all. I pray that all that's here, Lord, has received that saving grace. Mm -hmm. If not, this is the day that the Lord has made mm -hmm. and the day of the, the right day to do it. Mm -hmm. Because God says this is the day. The day that we realize that we not have it, Lord, that you are there waiting to give us that saving grace that we ultimately cannot live without. Mm -hmm. That is not live in eternity with you. We can live in eternity with Satan. Mm. But I think that's not a choice that would be wise for anyone. Uh, I've heard people say that they're going to hell to be with their friends. Mm. They don't know what they're saying, Lord. Sure. They don't have any idea because they don't know what hell is like. Oh, God. Lord, we just thank you for awakening <laughs> each one of us that oh, we might Lord. realize that without you, we are eternally lost. And Lord, we just thank you for revealing that to us, Lord. And give us this day, Lord, the message that we need mm. that we might hear from you. And Lord, have we have ears to hear, Lord, let us hear. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord, that with that hearing, as a disciple, as a, the, your disciples prayed, Lord, that, that you would give them uh, the ability to pray, Lord. I mm -hmm. pray you'd give us the ability to receive. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Awesome.
also continue to pray for Lucy's back. Continue to lift her up. Amen. She wasn't able to come last night. Still in some pain there. Not some pain, a lot of pain. So we'll lift her up to the Lord in prayer. All right, as you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7, just when you think, right? Just when you think, uh, you know, a hard message uh, just gets harder. Uh, and really, the truth of the matter is, um, most everybody, if we're honest, okay, and that's what we need to be, honest before God, we're, li we're looking for a life of ease. Uh, we're looking for a life, some type of life, uh, without suffering, without sorrow, I can inform you uh, this morning, which is something you already know, but we try to live without, you will not live an earthly life without suffering and without sorrow. This life, again, is full of those things, trials and tribulations and battles that we face. But this is not the end, is it, right? This is not the totality of life. God gives us eternal life, all those that will believe and receive. And so, really, Jesus said this uh, in the, later on in the book of Matthew. He's speaking of, again, the tribulation days in Matthew uh, 24 and 25. And uh, he's talking about the, the, the last days and what will take place. And, of course, there he's mentioning these, you know, earthquakes and uh, diseases and all these different things that are, will be a sign for you know, that the tribulation period, his second coming is near. Now, we know that's not what's on the timetable for the believer. We're looking for the rapture, amen? And so that's the next thing on the calendar. Now, folks, listen. Yeah, there's a lot of good men and different people that used to believe in the rapture and you know, the church. Now they're kind of going another way with it. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, we, you know, you believe something, you believe the scriptures teach it. And, and now there's some that are teaching that there's not going to be a rapture. It's just going to be a second coming. Uh, and uh, of course, the Bible speaks of the second coming and the rapture is a part of that. Uh, that's really when Jesus doesn't come to the earth, but he comes in the clouds to call us away. I don't know how people do what they do with the scriptures, but... Uh, I believe we need to be scripturally based, don't you? Amen. Amen. And uh, now, of course, we can go back and oftentimes some of our forefathers were wrong about things. They didn't have some information that we might have today and stuff. And so, you know, uh, one of the things is the crazy gap theory. I mean, my goodness, because evolution and all these different things were coming out and they were saying, hey, you know, these things... Uh, happened over billions of years and all these different things. And so we had to come up with something to refute that. And so the gap theory was come up with, and ay, yikes, you know, we don't need to come up with something better. We got the best, amen, the Word of God. And things that we might not understand, it's okay. It's okay, right? Because we know God understands, amen? And so we've been dealing with the Sermon on the Mount, and really it's the greatest sermon ever preached. And it's the best sermon we could ever go to when, we, when it comes to life and how to live life. And so it's very important. And we've mentioned to you the, the different themes. And we want to keep reiterating this over and over again because it's right there, okay? And the same thing will be in this particular passage of Scripture too. We said that really the key to the whole sermon is what verse? It's in chapter 5, verse 20. Verse 20. And what does it say? Who's there can read that for me so I don't give you the Bobby version of it? Nobody there yet? You're in Matthew 7. All right, Miss Karen, you read it for us. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah. Does it get any more straightforward than that than no case? So your case, my case, anybody else's case, you're not getting in. Except, right, your righteousness exceed, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. And so all through this passage of Scripture, it really goes back to that. And so does chapter 7. But here the whole thing is, we, with the whole series of messages has been entitled what? Now, I've said this not here recently, but it's entitled what, Lynn? Real righteousness. In comparison to the Pharisees and the scribes' righteousness, which wasn't real, it was what kind of righteousness? Blank righteousness. Starts with a no. Outward. Outward righteousness. 
And now we're coming to a passage of Scripture here where we just last week talked about... Now, this was last week, so maybe you'll remember who we talked about last week, okay? So we're not going through back to chapter 5. We're now in chapter 7. And last week we talked about a particular group of people. Who, who are they? The, the false prophets. We talked about the false prophets. Now, these are people, again, and we went over that extensively, that it's not really what they say. Oftentimes it's what they leave out. And really, you can tell by the things, the health and wealth and all these things, you know, what they're really all about, okay? But here now, we're going to deal with these people that are outwardly right and pretty much preach and teach the right things. And yet they too, again, this is an orthodox, these are orthodox people, they, they believe in the Bible, they believe in what the Bible says, and they're outwardly practicing that, but Jesus knows inwardly their hearts and why they're doing what they're doing. This is so important, folks. Listen, because a lot of people, and, and really the truth of the matter is, Martin Lloyd-Jones entitled his chapter on this, the, 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 the unknown, unknown hypocrisy. Unknown hypocrisy. Now, how can hypocrisy be unknown? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that. Because, again, deception is something. I started earlier to say what Jesus said in, in the, uh, uh, the, the Great Tribulation period. This is what he said. He said, if the day, he said, if the days were not shortened, meaning the Tribulation period, that even the very elect would be deceived. That's what he said. Y'all remember that? So, it's easily be, even for the child of God to be deceived in things. So we have to be careful. All through the scriptures, the Bible speaks of, David said it this way. He said, search me, O God, right? To see if there be any wicked way in me. Paul put it like this. He said, examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. But I'm telling you, folks, listen to me. You live in a day, I live in a day, is... Hey, you can't judge anybody, and matter of fact, don't even judge yourselves. Just live life, and everything's going to fall into place. But that's not what the Bible teaches, is it? And really, Matthew chapter 7, we said the theme of chapter 7 is what? Judgment. Judgment. And we want to go back to that as we look at this particular passage of Scripture and, and, and see that the Bible tells us clearly that there has to be some examination. Now, this is important. Now, folks, listen, I remember, uh, and, and he's gone on to be with the Lord just here recently, Tom Farrell. And, and I remember a, a radio uh, preacher, I can't remember if it was on BBN or one of these stations, uh, uh, that, that said that Tom Farrell could make the Apostle Paul doubt his salvation. <laughs> and I'll go, wow. And if you've never heard Tom Farrell preach, many times, a lot of people, you know, that were saved would get saved, <laughs> you know, over again. Because of his messages. And, but God, I'm not here today. This is not my purpose. God does not want us uh, to doubt our salvation. Because when you doubt your salvation, you doubt the God of salvation. But God does want you to check and make sure that you've truly been born again. Amen? Isn't that very important? Amen? Amen? I mean, really the truth of the matter is, folks, listen. That's what it's going to come down to when it comes to life. Heaven and hell, right? Eternal life or eternal death, right? right? Are these things not the most important things? Amen. And really, next week's message is talking about the house is built on sand or the house is built on the rock. This is important because foundation is important. And so we really need to look at our lives. There's nothing wrong with examining, especially when we're living a life of sin. To go back and say, God, help me. Where, where did I go wrong? Or, you know, am I born again? Now, I don't know about you, but I've questioned myself in my life plenty of times to say, my goodness, why would I commit such a thing or do such a thing? Am I really even saved? Now, I don't think God wants us to do that continually, constantly in our lives, but I know over and over and over again, the Bible speaks of this thing of examining, making sure that, uh, that we know that we know, again, that we've been born again and we've been saved. And again, uh, when it comes to the Pharisees 
and the scribes, we, we know that their salvation was a works salvation. A works salvation, right? <coughs> Ours is not a works salvation. It is a work salvation. It's a done salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection. It's not doing, it's being. And yet, in being, we should be doing. And so that gets confusing, doesn't it? And so we're going to look in the scriptures and we're going to look at some things, again, that I think can help us uh, to understand whether or not we, we are truly born again, whether or not we're not going to be like what Jesus talks about in verse number 21 of Matthew 7 and following. There's several uh, words there that we need to take hold of because they're important. And so here he says, first of all, in verse number 21, he says, not everyone. That's important, isn't it? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, sovereign God. You know, many people preach and teach and, and tell us that God is sovereign. Just because you say it doesn't mean that you believe it, right? And this is where we got to be careful. We, we think, well, I believe what that is saying. You know, well, you know, the Bible tells us that the devils believe, the demons believe and tremble. They believe in God. They believe God is sovereign. <laughs> they believe God's in control. Now, they're blinded, and they keep on living the way that they live, and so does the devil. But at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's not just this head knowledge. It's a, it's a knowledge of God that starts in the head and goes to the heart. Obviously, our emotions are attached to it, but, it, but it's a, 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 a true belief that God is who he says he is, and evidence of that is in a changed life. I'm going to talk about that too in just a minute. And so he says, not all, not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, uh, saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. This is so important, folks. What is the will of God? You know, many people say, I want to know the will of God. Where would you find the will of God for your life? This is not a trick question. I can't tell you what the will of God is for your life other than what the Bible says, right? Amen? Right. <clears throat> but every man, woman, boy, and girl can know what the will of God is for their lives. He says here, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Don't you think it'd be a good idea? <laughs> you know, if, if you really want to have a relationship with God and you want to go to heaven and you want to live eternally to know what God says about that? Not some man, not some interpretation of a man. But what does God say in his word, right? Amen, you with me? Okay, so then he comes down and there's another key word here in verse 22. Many will say to me in that day. Now, that's very important, isn't it? He says, many will say. He didn't say a few would say. He said, many will say. And when did he say they will say this? In that day. Now, I've mentioned to you this time and time again about the Apostle Paul. Paul, Paul lived for two days. And really, the truth of the matter is, this is the way we should live. Paul lived for this day and that day because he knew that what he did this day determined how it was going to be in that day when it came to the works that God was doing in his own heart and life. And so he submitted to that. They were God's works. Do you realize there's a difference? Folks, listen. You and I only see the outward deeds of a man, woman, boy, or girl. Did you realize two people could do the exact same thing and it looked the exact same way on the outside and yet one is a good work and one is an evil work? Right. Now, folks, listen. You know, people get mad at you. I sent an article. I can't even think what that guy's name is now. Uh, I, I, I was not sent an article. I'm sorry. I, I sent a message. Felt like the Lord wanted me to. Now, this guy's a... He's a big writer. I, I believe the man's saved. 
you know, but in his, in his devotional book, can you remember what devotional book it is? I don't want to call it out and call the man. I got a name in my mind right now, but I'm unsure if it's him or not. But he used, he used Mother Teresa as an example of doing good works for the, the changed life. And that stunned me. I'm like, huh? Now, I'm just telling you, Mother Teresa, folks, listen, according to her own self, she followed the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church's doctrine. In her writing, she said she was miserable all of her life, lived in darkness. The Bible says that the child of God does not live in darkness, but he lives in light. Amen. So, but I'm just going to tell you right now, are you listening to me? <laughs> I believe this. You could put all of our works together in here and it wouldn't compare to what Mother Teresa did with her life. That's, now folks, listen, I don't know about you, but that's scary. That somebody that's lost, that doesn't know the Savior, has given their lives to people to help them through poverty and hunger and, and just live this kind of life and yet not know Jesus. And yet the people that do know Jesus, they won't hardly do anything for God or that say they know Jesus. That's difficult, isn't it? <laughs> so I, I believe you and me both don't want to be an unknown hypocrite, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're a hypocrite in a way, you want God to reveal that to you. Amen, preacher. So that would be important for us to examine not only this is what I'm going to try to tell you in this message. Not what you do, but why you do it. That's what's important. And you and I, listen to me. We're not the judge, are we? Now you said, man, you just judged Mother Teresa. I didn't judge Mother Teresa. I'm just telling you from her own, hey, if she trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, she's in heaven, folks. But I'm just telling you from her own lips, she followed Catholic doctrine. She believed in the Catholic Church. And listen, Jesus said, <laughs> Jesus said, listen, you, you, you can't have both ways, right? There's only one way. You can't believe in Catholic doctrine and believe what the Bible says. You can't follow Catholic doctrine and believe what the Bible says. <laughs> you can believe whatever you want. I had a person call me some 15 years ago. And they tried to tell me over the phone, Pastor, don't you know Catholics are good people? Like, they're, they're nice. <laughs> well, what is I supposed to respond to that? Is niceness going to get you into heaven? Now, by the way, listen, there's probably Catholic people that are more nicer than Christian people. But that's not going to get you to heaven. Now, this is tough, isn't it? You know, you got to say these things and people get mad at you and all these other kind of things. But it's just the way it is, folks. We got to understand that Jesus is saying here that, listen, that, that, that you, you, there's going to be many that are going to say, Lord, Lord, on that day. And then notice not only the many, but notice what they say. That's important, isn't it? These are the people that are going to say to Jesus. They're actually going to present. Do you understand what's happening here? These particular people, orthodox people, people that followed, uh, whether it be the law or, or, or the word of God, outwardly and all these things, they're going to say to the Lord, they say, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not? You see what they're saying here? Have we not preached the right things? Now see, listen, folks, preaching the right things is not what's going to get you to heaven. Right? Doing the right things is not going to get you to heaven. Have we not, again, you could say that, uh, uh, in thy name cast out devils and demons? Now, of course, I, I don't believe in this today's times casting out demons and all that, but this was going on, uh, really, it was in that particular day. Many people spend more time focusing on demons than they do on God. <coughs> And so they say again, have we not done this? This Again, what is this? This is a work. This is an outward work. Are there outward works when there's an inward work? Absolutely. The book of James tells us plainly, a faith without works is dead, right? True. Believing faith, true believing faith will produce works. But there'll be God's works. 
Notice what he says here. And in thy name, done, done. Do you see that? Many wonderful works. Now again, folks, listen, I'm telling you again, <coughs> outwardly speaking, you can look at a lot of people that are unsaved, that believe in religion and all kinds of other things. Outwardly, they might follow the word of God and they're nice and they're kind and all these other kind of things. But God's going to say something interesting to hear about their many things that they're doing. And this is so important. We need to understand that that's why we examine ourselves and, and we look at our own motives. It's not just the method. It's just not what you do. But hey, it's your motive. He said, then, when, that day. Do you see how important that day is? What is that day, folks? Day of it's a day of judgment. You see, that's what we're coming to. Every single person's life. We've mentioned two years before. Now, the, the lost man, he's going to the great white throne judgment. And you know why he's going to be cast into the lake of fire? There's only one reason. I'll tell you what it is just now as we look at another passage of scripture. There's only one reason. There's only one reason. It's not because he was a murderer, a, 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 an adulteress, a, 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 a rapist, a thief, all those things. God took that care of that at the cross of Calvary for every man, woman, boy, or girl when he paid the sin debt for every single man, woman, boy, or girl. That's not why they go. And that's not why they're cast into the lake of fire. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. He says this, then that day, when I, will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, that work Iniquity. That's an amazing statement. Because listen to me, folks. At that day, they're saying to Jesus. A truthful statement. Outwardly, they preach the right things. Outwardly, they literally cast out demons. Outwardly, they did many wonderful works in the name of Jesus. Outwardly. You realize... Folks, Judas did the same thing. Y'all yeah, did realize that, right? So much so, folks. Listen, you remember when they were there having the Passover? This was before the institution of the communion because Judas could not take the communion because he was not believing in the death, burial, and resurrection that was to come. Remember, he went out in the darkness, but I'm talking about at the Last Supper. You remember Jesus told him there that, that one of you shall betray me. Now, listen, every single last one of them did something there. You know what they did? They examined themselves. <laughs> you realize none of them go, I'll tell you, we know who it is. Did they? Outwardly, Judas was just like them. They had no clue. Matter of fact, they thought he's a pretty good guy. He was holding the... How do we know that? He was the treasurer. Sorry, man. He was holding the bag. Now, y'all with me, right? <laughs> you don't let somebody that you don't trust hold the bag. Right? <clears throat> so, there was a lot of trust there, wasn't there? There was a lot of works that went on with Judas. He did the same things that the apostles did, the other 11. And yet, the Bible says that he was a devil. That's what Jesus said. One of you is a devil. And yet all of the apostles were saying, is it I? <laughs> Man, old Peter was like, hey, John, <laughs> you, know, you need to ask him. <laughs> right? <laughs> old Peter, he, that was one time he, you know, speaking up, he wanted to get John. He said, Man, John, you, you're closer to Jesus than I am. <laughs> you ask him who this person is. Why did he do that? I'll tell you why. Because every last one of us, if it wasn't for the grace of God, should understand that we'd all be lost if it wasn't for him. And every single one of us can go astray. And that's a bummer. Praise be to God that those that have been born again truly, 
and been put and placed in him <clears throat> cannot lose that because of him, not because of you or some work you do or don't do. Amen? See, that's scribes and Pharisee religion. People talk about what you do, how you do it, da-da-da. But Jesus is looking on the heart. He's not only looking. Remember, again, there's so many examples of this, folks. Remember when the woman threw in her two mites? Remember that? Remember where she throws in and, and, and Jesus was looking on. He's up on the hill. And all these men, they're, they're clanging, and putting all kinds of money in. And, and Jesus is like, she put in everything. The rest of these people, they, they put in, you know, again, a little bit. She put in all. He sees the heart. And all through this passage of Scripture, we've talked about uh, uh, trying to be seen of men and what men want to think of you rather than what God knows about you. And I tell you, when God begins to reveal in your heart who you really are, it's a difficult thing. And you're thankful for his grace and his mercy that you don't have to be that way. And it's all about him and not about you and your righteousness. Now, let's go back into a passage of Scripture. And I, I want you to see, we, we said in, in verse number 21, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Now, let's figure that out here from, from a scriptural basis. What would be the will of God? You know, we have plenty of examples that we can go to. Now, I advise you to do this. And um, if you truly want to examine yourself and, and, and look at your life and who you are on the inside, I would, a, a book, First John is a wonderful book. Amen. It's a book about uh, light Love and life. And, and, and really, the whole book is about Jesus. It's about who he is and how he's placed himself in true believers. And they'll have these characteristics in their life. They're not going to do everything perfect. But I'm going to tell you what. They're going to realize that they're sinners in need of a Savior and constantly. Because he says there, he said, if any man say I have no sin, he's talking to believers. He's a liar and the truth is not in him. We all still have the old sin nature. But that should never be our practice. We've got to ask God again daily to help us through prayer and through the word of God. And so we're looking at John chapter 6. Look with me there. And this is a prime example of people. Now, you can go all over the Bible, folks, and see people that do outwardly things. And why, what is their true motive for following God? And you can examine your own life, and you need to ask yourself these questions, folks. Why do you do what you do or don't do what you do? Is that not important? Amen? Why should you live a life for God? What is it that God wants you to do? Well, I'm going to show you here in this passage of Scripture. What is the work of God, and what is uh, 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 following God's will? Look what he says here in verse number uh, 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 22 in following and stay with me here because we, we want to gather again what the, the context of the scriptures. Remember after this, it says uh, in verse number 22, the day following. So they, they just come across and, and, uh, the, the, the feeding uh, uh, of the multitude of people there. And so naturally, uh, when you see this supernatural work, you're going to have followers. People want to see these miracles and these different things. And so the Bible says the day following, verse 22 of chapter 6, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save the one where the disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but his disciples were gone away alone. How be it? There came other boats from Tiberias, nigh into the place where they did eat bread. Okay, this is where the miracle took place, okay? He said, after the Lord had given thanks. And when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples... They also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. Now, that's a good thing, isn't it? Amen? Man, it's a great thing when a multitude of people seek for Jesus, right? We need to realize everybody that's saying they're seeking for Jesus is not really seeking for Jesus for the right reasons. This is important. And he said, when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, or teacher, great teacher, master, when camest thou hither? How'd you get here? <laughs> Maybe I don't have time to go into that. <laughs> Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, okay, or truly, truly, you would do no harm to the past scripture, said it. I say unto you, 
You seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you ate or eat of the loaves and were filled. <laughs> That's so odd, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, here, these people are seeking for Jesus and they ask Jesus, how'd you get here? <laughs> Jesus just goes straight into them. Where'd he go? He didn't go into the question. He went into the heart. Right? It seems as if these people are true seekers of Jesus. Right? Outwardly. They want to know what's going on. How does this happen? And these are great things here going on. Right? And yet Jesus says, he went straight to the matter, didn't he? To the heart. You, you don't seek me because he's a mirror. You seek me because you were fed. In a situation where God worked a great miracle, where there's just a small amount of food, he fed everybody. What a blessing, right? Amen. Wouldn't that have been great to see? Amen. I'm sure all of us would have been astounded by this. And rightfully so. This was a great miracle. And then he says this. Labor not for meat which perishes, but for that which, which but, <clears throat> excuse me, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. He says here, now folks, listen, this is what I'm saying. Again, going back to the chapter 7, <coughs> many people are doing things and they have the wrong motives in the wrong reasons while they're doing what they're doing. And this is exactly what's happening here. On the outward, it looks as it appears that these are real seekers of Jesus. They really have a desire for Jesus. But Jesus knows their hearts. He knows why they're doing what they're doing. And it's all about them. And really the truth of the matter, oftentimes with preachers and other people that may be preaching the right things, it's still about them. It's about their work. Really, folks, listen, there is only one work. That's Jesus' work. God does not build a church upon another man. Amen. Amen. He builds his church upon Jesus Christ and him alone. Amen. I don't care how big a church is. I don't care how small a church is. If it's not built on Jesus Christ, it's going to crumble one day. All you have to do, folks, is look at England and see what's happened to that place. Most of those churches over there, a lot of them are just taverns today. You imagine Faith Baptist Church one day, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, being a beer joint? It could happen. And don't think that it can when you start going in the wrong direction, in the wrong way, and you build on the wrong things. Amen. And so notice what happens here. Automatically, because this is the way of man, folks. This is man's heart. Heart. Then said they unto him, <laughs> you with me? What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Right? Now listen, every man wants, hey, Jesus just said in, in, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 7, no man's going to enter the kingdom of God uh, except he, he does the will of the Father. Right? So there is a will in there. Amen? And so here these people, they, 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 they want to know what they can do because that's natural for the natural man. He wants to have his hand in it. Some, you realize that's what religion is built upon, folks? There's only two types. It really, there's Christianity and everything else. There's a done religion found only in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ or there's works religion mixture, all these other kinds of things. That's it. It's either do or done. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe in the done. Amen. Amen. That he has done the work. Amen. Notice what happens. And Jesus says, you want to know? Jesus answered and said unto him, this is, it doesn't get any plainer, the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. Do you see that? Don't miss that. This is the work of God. You realize what I told you earlier. There's not a man, woman, boy, or girl that's going to be cast into hell, folks, because of anything else other than unbelief. 
That's it. Unbelief. Folks, listen to me. 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid your saved sinner's debt. You say born again. But he paid every single sinner's debt. It's been paid. It's not to be worked. When something's been paid, you don't work it off. <laughs> Amen? But I'm telling you, folks, listen, oftentimes we're deceived. We base our life on works and what we're doing rather than on the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've said this time and time again, and, and this is my problem. I just don't put it into practice it enough. Quit trying and start trusting. We, folks, listen, and when it's our work, we try and try and fail and fail and try and fail and try. And God wants us to trust him that he's already done the work and whatever he's called you to do, he can do it. Amen. Faithful is he that hath calleth you who will also do it. Amen. It's his good pleasure to do the will and work in you. Amen. And that's what makes the difference between a lost man's work and a saved man's work. Because a saved man's work is not his work at all. It's God's work. A lost man's work is a work of iniquity. You say, man, but it's good. Not in God's sight. But there's good in everybody, pastor. Really? That's not what the Bible says. You remember the rich young ruler? He came to Jesus. Now, folks... Do I not believe that the rich young ruler was sincere? Yeah, I do. Matter of fact, man, I come across this. I think I told you uh, it might have been a year or so. It could have been last week. I don't think it was last week. But some people believe that might have been Joseph of Arimathea. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Hey, man, if that, that rich young ruler got, got saved, hey, man. The Bible says that he, he went away, right? Miserable. He, he said, man, he, he thought he could do something. Jesus said, you got to give up everything, <laughs> Right? That'd be wonderful if that man ended up down through the years some way, somehow, and the only way, got saved by the grace of God. Amen? He said, but he said, what must I do to inherit, to, to have, he come into inheritance himself, and he wanted to know what he could do to inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus basically said, why call that me good? There's none good, not one. And so here, Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. Now let's read this here and get the context of these particular people. They're the same people that outwardly, they said they wanted to follow the law. They said that they wanted to do all these things. He said, they said, therefore, unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What, what doest thou work? Now, folks, listen, when you read the Bible and you think about yourself, what is it going to take for us to believe God? Now, I just told you, they just come through the feeding of the multitude of people. That's actually why they're, that's actually why they're following Jesus. Because they saw this and they were fed. And yet they say to Jesus, folks, listen, can I tell you something? There will never be a sign big enough to help you believe. Amen? I don't care what happens. The only way is the Spirit of God through the Word of God bringing you to the Father. As no man cometh unto the Father except the Spirit of God falleth them. Amen? Amen? It's so here. Yeah. Mixture. They just saw the sign. What more do you need? More. Right? God help us. Notice what they said. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. <laughs> so, folks, listen. If it wasn't so sad, it would be so humorous. They're talking to Jesus. They're talking to the very one that spoke this world into existence. Amen. They're talking to the very one that, that did this himself with the Father, sending down this manner. They're quoting scripture to Jesus. Have you ever done that before? Hello. Have you 
you ever quoted scripture to Jesus? Trying to do what? Get your own way? I don't know about you, but I am. That's the devil's ploy. We don't want it our way, folks. We want it God's way, amen? Whatever his will is for our lives. It should be that way, amen? amen. But oftentimes we're doomed. Notice what he says here. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, he said, I say unto you, you know, because what did they say? Our fathers. <laughs> they were speaking of Moses. He says, he said, I say to you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. You realize what's important in this life is life. <laughs> Amen. Having real life. Real righteousness, having Christ. He said, then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Right? Sounds like they want it to me, doesn't it to you? And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. That changed everything. We want it. <laughs> right? We want what you're talking about. Now, they weren't like the woman at the well. They were like the many. That said they wanted something that they really didn't want. They still wanted themselves and their religion. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me. And here it is, folks. Believe not. I am the one that God has sent. I am the true one. I am eternal life. I am the way. This is what Jesus is saying to them. He said, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. It doesn't matter what man says. It matters what Jesus says. He said, if you'll come to him, amen, he won't cast you out. Amen. That's beautiful, isn't it? But you got to really come to him. Amen. you got to believe what he says about himself and who he is and about you and who you are. And it's not about a work that you can do. He says here, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, okay, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him which sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Can I ask you again, is everlasting life not important? Amen. Amen. And so the truth of the matter is, our lives, stay with me now, what's the Father's will for us? Is it not to share the good news with others, the everlasting life that God has given us? Isn't it to take, listen to me, our time, our talent, and our treasures and, and, and allow God to pour that into his work? Right? Just one second, okay? Let me go up here. I want to get something here, so I'll make sure I quote this right. I sent out a text this week. Matter of fact, I think it was uh, yesterday. And this is this is what I sent out. In the work of the church, the amount one man must do to accomplish a given task is determined by how much or how little the rest of the company is willing to do. It is a rare church whose members all put their shoulder to the wheel. The typical church is composed of the few whose shoulders, shoulders are bruised by their faithful labors and the many who are unwilling to raise a blister in the service of God and their fellow men. There may be a bit of wry humor in all this, but it's quite certain that there will be no laughter when each of us gives an account to God of the deeds done in the body. A.W. Tozer in the 50s. Now let me give you a response that I got. I'm not going to mention their name, but if they watch me on YouTube, I want to answer your question to this. 
This is the response I got back from that. From a believer. And I believe they're, I believe they're a believer. But I don't believe they thought when they sent this back to me at all about what was sent to them. Make, y'all listening to me? Make the work seem worthy and all will put themselves to it. Make the work seem worthy and all will put themselves to it. I thought my soul. How do I make the Lord Jesus Christ death and burial and resurrection salvation of the soul eternal everlasting life how do i make that seem worthy to somebody i'm just telling you if it ain't worthy then get out he's worthy amen of my all my belief my trust it's not a work that I can do. I can't work it up. You can't work it up, folks. Right? Now, you can go through this passage of Scripture, and we don't have time. But my soul, here these people outwardly, they're, they're saying they, they, they want something that they really don't want. They want to be involved with it. They want to somehow give a man credit. Now, I'm going to tell you, Moses was a great man. Well, he was a good man. There's only one great man. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Abraham was a good man. Yes, we can look back at some of the good men of our day. The Hudson Taylors. Different men. The Livingstons. The McLarens. The Tozers, even. But I'm telling you, there's nobody like Jesus. We don't build our lives on a man except the man, Christ Jesus. He's our foundation. He's our everything. And yet we say we want certain things, but we still want to have our hand in it. And we're going to read just the rest of this, and then we'll, we'll, we'll close. He says, <clears throat> excuse me. And the Jews murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. He's only telling the truth. <laughs> Amen. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he say, I came down from heaven? Do you see that, folks? Seeing the human rather than the divine. Now, Jesus was perfectly human. Amen. But he's perfectly divine at the same time. And no man will ever understand that at all, but he'll never have an inkling of understanding except God give him some of that understanding of it. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come, unto, uh, come to me except the Father which sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is not something that you're going to be able to understand in your human logic and your human reasoning. Understand the only way that you're... This is a gift, amen. And you and I are blessed to be able to receive that gift. But I tell you, God presents it to all men, women, boys, and girls. And the, the, the real key is whether you believe or not believe. He said, it is written in the prophets... And they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. They received that miracle. Right? And they died. God gave them nourishment. That was amazing, wasn't it? What God did those 40 years in the wilderness, 
You telling me that wasn't an amazing miracle? God gave him this superfood, this manna that nourished every part of their body. Physical food. They died. You can't live. <clears throat> you can live physically. But you can't live fe uh, uh, spiritually on physical food. On physical things. They died. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give unto the world. Speaking again of his death, his crucifixion, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. He said, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give his flesh to eat? Again, they're seeing it from a human standpoint. Right? And from a human standpoint, that'd be cannibalism, wouldn't it? Right? But he goes on. Then Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, or true, true, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in him, and I in him. And as a living Father has sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, there's that word again, when they heard that this said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, this is offends you. What if I shall say the Son of Man shall ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth or make alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. There's nothing that you can do in the flesh to gain eternal life or spirituality. And yet the devil has doped us just like they did back in the days of, uh, of Galatia. Who has betwixt you, thinking that you can get saved by faith, and yet you can live your life by your own works? It's impossible. Amen. And a person that believes in their own works, they're not born again. They're not saved. And that's why we've got to examine ourselves to look in our hearts and say, am I really trying to appease or please God with my own self? That's a work of the devil. We need to make sure that the works that we're doing are true works of God and that our motive is right and for God to get glory and we have a true desire in our heart. Every person is born again at least starts with a desire. You may squelch that desire. You may do all kinds of things to put it aside. But you have a desire for other people to have what you've received freely by God. God help us. He says, listen to this. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there's some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, I said unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him by my father. Now, you see, folks, listen, it wasn't a sacrifice. There wasn't a feast. There wasn't anything in the Old Testament that they did. Okay? You with me? All the things that God required of them, whether it had been the dietary laws or all these things that God had them do, none of those things could save them. None of those were, were meant to save them. And yet, for hundreds of years, understand these people, they've been taught by the scribes and Pharisees. This outward religion. Thinking that, it's, and one of the biggest things, we talked about this uh, 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 Wednesday night, circumcision. As long as you're circumcised, you say you're part of the family of God. True or false? False. It was never about that. It was to show that you truly were, again, if you, you, you follow God's commands, right? You read the book of 1 John again. 
He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and my commandments are not grievous. Amen. He also says there, they were, many of them were of us, but they went out from us because they were never of us. What does that mean? That means they chose. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, you're either going to come back to God when you sin, do wrong, whatever it might be, okay, or God's going to take you out. But if you never come back to God without his chastisement, something's wrong, folks. Right? Amen? And so it's very important, again, to understand what Jesus is saying here to the multitude of people here. He says, many, many are going to say, we've done all these things. We, we've done the right stuff, right? But the motive was wrong. And who knows the motive better than Jesus? I, he's already said, folks, listen to us. Listen to me. He's already said, get the beam out of your own eye, right? So you can remove the speck out of somebody else's eye. He's already told us this before we got to this right here, right? So it's all about judgment. So you and I can't, we cannot say, oh, that man's saved. He's not saved. I see his word. We can't do that. Now we see, we see bad works outside. People say that they're believers. We see good works from people that, that, that say they're, they're not saved. All these different kinds of things. But no way. We can't determine who's saved and who's false. Only God's the judge of that. But I tell you what, we can examine our own selves. And we can ask ourselves, and it's a good thing to ask ourselves, because sometimes our motives get messed up, right? Now, there's not a person in here that I know of, you, you could be like this, but doesn't at times want to be seen or noticed. It's just, that's nature. That's the way we are, you know, right? Now, I don't have time to go into that, but listen to me. All your time, all your talent, all your treasure, need to be presented to the Lord and let him determine what you do with your time, what you do with your talent, and what you do with your treasures. But ultimately, that's going to come back to glorifying God, right? It's not about soul winning. Soul winning is definitely a part, amen. I believe a believer ought to be a soul winner, amen. But the bottom line is, really, you were made for to bring pleasure to God. And one of those ways is by giving out the gospel. But another way is living the gospel every day. Many people are giving out the gospel, but they're not living the gospel. God help us. Let's stand to our feet, but the rain's going to come, Miss Melody. Heavenly Father, we're grateful to be able to preach your message today. Father, we pray, dear God, that you'd help us, Lord, to understand the perfect, I mean, the, uh, the realness uh, of salvation. Uh, certainly, we're not here to cause people to doubt. But Father, we want to certainly doubt if we don't have something. God, and if we're not real, Lord, we want you to work in our hearts and lives. We want you to change us from the inside out. Father, we know we've all sinned, and really that sin should bring us back to you to, to, to just come to you and, and uh, examine our lives again. And Father, as David said of old in Psalm 139, search me, O God. See if there be any wicked way in me. And God, we pray that we allow the Holy Spirit to put the searchlight on our lives, that we repent that we would turn and, Father, recognize how worthy you are of us giving our lives totally to you and not try to do anything on our own. Father, we pray again that you would bless your invitation. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 591, have thine own way. You come, God spoken to your heart. <coughs>
other, obviously he was talking about the Red Sea and probably the, the swollen Jordan River where you, the God of power, made dry land appear because thou art a God of power, thou art a God of miracles. So Father, there's probably not a person here who doesn't need to know your power and your miracle in their life today. Especially if that person is without Christ. Has never given their life to the Lord Jesus Christ and received him as their Savior and their Lord. They definitely need a miracle in their life. And we're thankful that we know that thou art a God who is powerful, miraculous, and does it if we would just yield ourselves. So as we part, we pray that each one of us would go out of here with a, an attitude and an assurance in our hearts that we do know the Lord as our Savior. We have seen his power and miracle in our lives. We pray that you would do this through the power of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in the worthy name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.